so I'm curious. I was listening to um, a podcast. Wait, what's it called? I don't know. I was interviewing Alanis Morissette. Wait, let me look because I don't want to mess it up. It's so good. It was so good. We can do hard things with Glennon Doyle. Uh, and the soccer player, cool chick. Um, anyway, uh, Glennon Doyle has a really good book too. That's how I found her. And my sister is a weird stan. But anyways, they're talking about highly sensitive people or like empathic people. So I'm curious how many of you guys kind of identify as that. I feel like I'll probably attract a lot of um, just energetically open people. Uh, but it was interesting because she was saying that like 30% of the population is highly sensitive and maybe that number is even growing because now it's kind of more common. And then, and then of that, some of those people are empaths. And I was listening to that and I just got like, soul tears i was like oh i'm so seen i kind of forgot about that term too but it's interesting to me because like i mean alanis morissette is everything <laughs> uh she's also an enneagram four or any guys are fours me too uh but you know she's like a rock star on stage like she's an absolute badass but she's also just like needs like quiet time and so yesterday's video was saying like oh you know i had to embrace that about myself but i think there's so many healers out there that are kind of just don't realize it because they're just picking up so many things like i have such a hard time in a crowd or when it's super loud or um and it's just because like we are re receptive of just everything around us and so you might process in your body 30 things um when you walk into a room or like a hundred things so if you're not highly sensitive then you're not gonna be like aware but it's literally like somatic experience for me like i literally feel so i want to know if you guys feel like that too because i was also listening to it and thinking like dang like, I wish that everybody, it was common knowledge how those chakras work because as you heal these things, and a lot of sensitive people end up being, um, have like a lot of addictions, like love addiction, alcohol addiction. For me, it was like weed. I don't care what they say about it not being addicting. Like, I needed that hit. Like, I was working so many jobs and on my 10 minute breaks, I was like, I have to go just like, <laughs> real quick and like blast. And for me, it was actually very grounding. I didn't feel like high. Um, I just felt like calm again. And so it was interesting to hear that because, you know, obviously for Alanis, it's, that's her gift and it's celebrated now. Um, but I think so many people are just weighed down by so much energy and they don't have like clearing practices. Um, and it was like kind of breaking my heart because I was like thinking about young me and how I didn't know because, you know, extroversion and productivity are, are so celebrated in, in society. Whereas back in, back in the day, you know, when society was more feminine, meaning that, you know, intuition was valued and wisdom was valued. Those kinds of people were like shamans. And one of my sisters, um, Rebecca, shout out if you listen to this ever, uh, she's super, super sensitive and, and special. Um, she's a lot more like, in some ways can hold a crowd, I think a little bit better than I can. But nonetheless, the way that her body processes things is she would get seizures and she didn't know why. Um, and now she's starting to see it like, like, because if you read a lot of traditions, shamans would have, you know, convulsions and shake and have visions and, um, and it was so celebrated. Those would have been like leaders in society and probably more like tribes. And, and I think that now people are going to start kind of waking up to the feminine way of being where, where we're calm and collected and they're making a point of like feminine leadership isn't, the work isn't done until everybody can move forward. 
and I really feel like that like the, my work is not done until I think everybody is included everybody is felt the environment is uplifting for everyone and so it was is really interesting to listen to that podcast and, and just feel like very seen but also like there was still more work to be done because not everybody knows that they're you know sensitive and and it just feels like you can't like you come home and it's just like you're exhausted and so instead of getting to like use your free time to be creative or relax it's it's just like you're literally in pain um and and so much of that is just it's felt pain that's collective pain or it's what's you know the why I'm starting to learn more and more about astrology it's like you can see sort of the collective waves coming on or if you're into like the Schumann resonance we can literally see that there's a bunch of energy like you know sun flares or whatever like coming down at our planet and so if you're sensitive you are gonna feel that on top of whatever you're feeling just in your life um and for me like and I think many people there's the feeling body, the emotional body, there's the physical body, you know, we're multidimensional and it's all layered on top of ourselves. And um, it's not like you, you have to kind of self navigate, we have to like down regulate, like self soothe. And so a lot of the self soothing habits, if we're not aware of our energy body, then that could look like bad habits. And so my heart just goes out to anyone that's feeling like that. Uh, and so too, I feel even more charged to bring these teachings because when you feel a certain feeling, it, you know, the chakra is like, like frustration is in one chakra. The bliss is in another, like divine knowing is in another. And so if we can kind of map our energy and how we're feeling, then then when we know that, then there's so much insight into like how to nourish yourself. Um, like I was feeling really emotional the other day and I know that that's like my sacral chakra. So I went home and ate carrots, <laughs> like orange food. And we can do so much with like the, cl the clothes that we wear because everything is light and sound. And so it's, it's really, it would be so cool if, if our like, you know, say you go to the doctor and they're like, oh, you know, let me look into what you're eating. Let me look into how you're feeling. Let me look into your your family background. Um, I study Ayurveda, so like when you come in to do um, a, like your first appointment kinda is, it's looking at so much, it's just a lot of questions to try to figure out your dominant dosha. And your dominant dosha is gonna be kapha, vata, or pizza, which is basically earth, water, fire, ether kind of energy. And so all of our constitutions, we sort of are, are dominated by one of those. And it cracks me up because people will be like, oh, I'm kapha. And then like, you're basically saying like, I'm my imbalance. Cause in kind of the Western world, we look to like identify so much. It's like a personality test, um, like Myers-Briggs, if there's any INFPs out there. Uh, and another shout out to Mr. Manifestation. He works a lot with Myers-Briggs and it's it's super interesting. It's very practical to sort of, you know, especially if you're building a team or you're like, you know, more in the workplace environment to just kind of see, you know, the personality types and see them all as gifts. Like, it's important to have an introverted person um, and it's important to have somebody that's, you know, more extroverted and wanting to, you know, be the, the moral or the help people rally and feel excited about things. and we're all so complex, but like it's the sensitive 30% of the population or like um, if you're like projector or, or reflector, uh, th there's, there's so many different systems, but yeah, I, I just think the chakra system, the tantric systems are so thorough, like mind, body, soul. And sometimes we get stuck with this. We're like, I am this, like I am my sun sign. And it's like, your sun sign's your ego. It's like what you're supposed to overcome. Like your journey is to, you know, ascend out of that. Like my sun sign is Taurus. 
Um, and so I have to lead into my sister sign, which is Scorpio. And that's my medicine. I go, have to go deeply into the cave. I have to go really into the underworld to, to feel balanced um, for, my, for you know, all of the things coming into my field. But if I didn't know that, and I didn't know that, it was, it was so hard to be alive. Like I remember uh, a really significant like sort of breakdown I had um, was I moved away for a while up to the Pacific Northwest and um, I had a really amazing partner at that time and, and um, he was extremely sensitive too. And so we, I mean, honestly, it was a codependent relationship because we didn't ever want to do anything. We were like, let's just be at home and like watch movies and I, I just can't party. And we lived with a lot of roommates. So it was like, we got our like social stimulation every day and then it was like, I'm done, you know, I have to work. And when I go home, I'm, I'm tired. And so, anyways, we, we split up and he's, he's lovely, big fan still, but, um, and I'm so sorry, I should be saying they. They are so, so lovely and, and a special person. Uh, but like, <laughs> it was one of the kind of my first sort of parties back in um, you know, Southern California. And so I had all these people that I hadn't seen in so long and I, so I was like, I, I need, I felt like I had to do this. I, I felt low on my energy, but I like had to do this. And um, I'd also, you know, been up where there was so much trees, so much nature. And so I could regulate my, my nervous system a lot easier. And then I came home and it was, it was harder. There was more, you know, there's more noise, there's more traffic, there's less parks. And so I went to this party and like, I just so, you know, I really wanted to connect with all these people. And instead, like I, you know, kind of lasted a little bit. I think I had a drink, I smoked a little pot, and then I was out of my body. I was out of my body. Like, I, like I've had a couple experiences like that, but never as much in like a social setting. And I remember just like spinning. Like I thought the whole room was just moving. And um, I remember sitting on my friend's stairs and I had to leave the party. And I remember thinking that everyone must think that I'm such an asshole. Like, and they talked about this in the podcast because when you start to cope and you don't know what's happening, it's like all of a sudden you have to just block off all of the stimulation. And like, that was me and I had to remove myself. And I, I think I lasted like, like 40 minutes at this party. And I, I, it was like, I was, I was both spinning, like my brain was spinning and I was spinning up. So I was like, all of a sudden I was like above the room, like looking down at everyone. And then I, it, and I just was like, I'm gonna barf, I'm sweating, like every, like my nervous system was completely shutting down. Um, and I had also had a seizure earlier that year. And so I think I also kind of psychosomatically freaked myself out. Cause I was like, what if I start fucking shaking right now? There's like a party. And so anyways, I went home and, um, you know, I later talked to one of my friends and she was like, you know, you're really different now. And it hurts, it hurt. Like I was like, and she was kind of blaming like my relationship, like, and of course I was different. Like I moved away for a while, like hopefully I'm different. Hopefully we all change, we all grow. And um, I didn't necessarily want to be who I was when I moved away um, at 18 or, or I can't remember how old I was, maybe 19, but uh, so just empathy, emph emphasizing and em, empathizing I'm forgetting the word I don't know but having compassion for anyone that's you know learning boundaries to like take care of yourself is really hard especially when you are empathic because you're also feeling everyone else's feelings so it's like I don't I don't want to make you feel like I don't want to spend time with you or I don't I'm not present and eventually I learned like I, I just do a lot better one-on-one -on -one, or I, I do a lot better when people kind of come to me and I can be in my role of like, you know, yoga teaching is like a lot of controlling the environment and making everybody calm and then, and then doing the energy healing and body work. It's like me with one person at a time 
and again, like I get to really regulate their nervous system. And by regulating their nervous system, I'm, I'm regulating my, my own nervous system. And maybe that's good or bad, I don't know. But I just want to bring more awareness that there's, there's, there's other kinds of people. There's, there's men, and they all need to shine and they all need to be out in the world uh, because it's, it's everyone's strengths combined that makes the world go around and makes the world a better place. So let's do a little breath practice just to regulate our nervous systems. Uh, and yeah, just, just be more in harmony with the many ways of being and how that's all a gift and it's all important and there's space for every kind of human being every kind of earth angel, every kind of baby dragon, like <laughs> there's many of us out there. And yeah, so let's take a moment to feel our sitting bones. Let's take a big inhale and a deeper exhale. Inhale again, and an exhale. One more time, three sacred breaths. I'm gonna practice alternate nostril breathing. There's many ways to do this, but we're gonna do one pattern. So we will grab a shaka and then send out your ring finger. And we're gonna just plug our right nostril and breathe in and out of the left side five times. Plug their left nostril, breathe through the right side five times. Switch, so breathe up the right nostril. Exhale up the left nostril. Inhale up, up the left side. Exhale the right side. Inhale right. Exhale left. Left. Exhale right. And you're making this little bridge. Imagining smoke coming up to the third eye. You're breathing so subtle, very slow. Exhale left. Slowly take your hand away. Just imagine you're breathing one side and the other. And then notice how you feel now. Very quick way to downregulate, to calm down. You can do it 
many times as you can. You're in your car on a break or you're about to walk into a building. It helps you check in with your own energy, see how you feel. And then that way when you leave a space that has maybe a crowd or, or something that you might pick up on, when you leave, you check in again and then it's easier to see like, oh, now my shoulder hurts or now I have sadness. And then you can kind of gauge like, oh, that might not be mine. Maybe you can brush it off. I think literally brushing the body is a really good way to, to clear energy. Feeling your feet is huge. So I hope that is just a practical little magical tip for if you do feel like a highly sensitive person or an empath or a Enneagram 4 or whatever, I um, hope that serves you well. Namaste.